In this video, we will learn about beach features and how they are formed, specifically ripples, runnels, ridges, offshore bars and cusps. So let's begin with ripples. These are features formed as the tide goes out and the waves, as they are retreating, they create patterns in the sand. And these are the ripples that you can see here. They're only visible on sandy beaches and only visible at low tide. Of course, at high tide, when the tide comes back in, they are covered up. So now let's look at runnels and ridges. Firstly, it's important to remember that a sandy beach is rarely completely flat. So as a tide starts to ebb or go out, it will encounter some of these naturally raised areas of sand which force the waves to slow down. And in doing so, any sand that the waves are carrying as they retreat, these will be deposited. And these start to build up in height to create ridges. So here is a ridge. And any water left from the outgoing tide, which is trapped between the ridge and the beach. Uh, this creates a runnel. So runnels are just natural ditches of water which are quite shallow between a ridge and the beach. And we can see these um, ever more clearly on the photograph below. So we have a, a well-formed ridge here of sand and trapped between the ridge and the beach, uh, a runnel. And on the diagram, above uh, where I've highlighted HT or high tide and LT for low tide um, you can see that the ridge will be visible at low tide and the the runnel which is the uh, area of green I've colored there that's the water that's trapped between the ridge and the beach only visible at low tide once high tide comes, you won't be able to see any runnels or ridges. Uh, they will be completely covered. So cusps are naturally formed semicircular patterns visible on a beach. How do they form? They naturally form in bays. And this is because as the tide comes in a bay, the wave energy is refracted or bent. I'm just going to draw this on this di photograph here. And the bending of the waves causes the energy to be spread out. So there will be some areas of the beach which will have a stronger swash than others. So as the swash comes in, it may be forced to divide right and left, and indeed probably meet up with another swash that's been forced to divide and two swashes coming together will create a stronger backwash and this stronger backwash sort of gouges out or erodes the beach uh, to create this semicircular shape that is a feature of the cusp and the cusp has uh, two main features where the swash is forced to divide, where there is a point on the beach, this is known as the horn, and there are two on this diagram. And the area of beach which has been eroded is known as the embayment. They're like tiny little bays within the beach itself. So that is how a cusp is formed. Offshore bars are simply deposits of sand off the shore and we can see this specifically between summer and winter profiles. In the top diagram where we have our sum, summer profile, we can see a well-formed beach and by the winter time, with more destructive storms and waves, the beach material has been eroded and it has been deposited off the shore here. And this is not visible at low tide. You can't see a sandbar or, or an offshore bar generally because it is too far below low tide. And we can see this on the diagram below, um, low tide, which is at this point here, and the bar 
where we have a deposition of sand or pebbles indeed um, can be seen there. So what have we learned? If this photograph was in an A-level exam paper, a typical question might be to ask what features can be identified and to explain how they're formed. So what can you see? You should be able to identify the runnel here, the body of water between the ridge and the beach, and you should be able to be able to identify some ripples within the um, water there formed as the tide ebbs.